Aisha Scott from Below Deck Down Under, our chief stew. So great to see you. Aisha, I was Hello. so excited to see you on Below Deck Down Under because I will tell you, I was so sad when you finished med and I thought, she's never coming back. What, <laughs> what changed between when you left the boat in med and you saw, thought, okay, I'm going to do Down Under? Thank you so much, first of all. That's so nice of you. Um, but I know a lot of people ask me this because at the end of season five, a lot of people remember I was like, I'm done, I just want to go home, blah, blah, blah. But at that time, I had done a whole yachting season already and then I'd been heavily drinking at a wedding that I went to in Bali. And so this was kind of at the end of all that and I was just so burnt out. And then that's when I got the call to be like, We've, we've had to do a crew change, like, can you come and fill in? So by the time I finished filming season five, I was exhausted, like, in a way that I haven't been ever in my life. So and I was just in a frame of mind where I was like, I'm done. I have to go home. I need to rest. And then I rested. And then, you know, my sanity came back. And I was like, I can't give up yachting. Like, I love yachting. And any yachty you, you meet will tell you, Everyone has tried to leave three or four times. I've tried to leave like four times, but it's so addictive and how hard it is and beautiful it is that you just keep coming back. <laughs> it's like being in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's terrible for your health at times, but you just can't give it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when you did come back, you got the captain of all captains. I mean, Jason, you guys are so similar. Did you know the minute you met him, like, we're going to get along really well? Oh my goodness. 1000%. When I met him, he just, you know, he's Australian, which is great first off the bat because we're pretty much the same culture. We're very similar. Um, and he's just a very warm and inviting person. And I think in the first like 10 minutes, we said our first dirty joke. And I was like, this is my person. <laughs> we just knew we were going to be really good friends. Yeah. Yeah. And you both seem to have very similar management style. Like you're a lot of fun. You're very kind. But, you know, we saw a side of you this season where you, you get to the point where you're like, okay, like you are mm -hmm. very tough. Is that sort of a side that maybe fans were a little surprised to see? Oh, I definitely think so, because obviously in season four and five, the only Asia that you see is like the wild, crazy Asia, which is me most of the time. But I definitely coming into this new role, you know, you're a leader and I so believe that you should always lead, lead with kindness. But I think with some of the crew members that I got dealt, it just got to the point where I was like, even I kind of reached my limit. And I was like, guys, like, come on. Yeah, well, you had Toomey, which you could just let her go. She's fantastic, right? She's amazing. Like, one of, she has only, had only at that point had six months experience. You would think she'd had years. She is so naturally capable because she just has common sense. She, she's got initiative. She gets it. Yeah, yeah. No, like, you definitely never worried about her. And the thing is, is you really liked Magda, but... How bad was the phone thing? Was it literally like she was hiding all the time and you just gave, like, we're like, I can't do this. Yeah, well, you know, it actually wasn't until, because I, I noticed that she was slacking and I just couldn't understand where it was coming from. You know, like she, I'd, I'd give her a task and it just wouldn't be done anywhere near the time that I'd expect it to be done. And I'm like, is she just an experience? Like, what is going on? It was driving me crazy. And then it wasn't actually until... Jason pulled me aside and he was like, um, look at Magda's phone use. It's insane. And I was like, what the hell? That's wild. Like it blew my mind. And I think a lot of the viewers, they think that I went to Jason to, to complain about the phone, but I actually, it was Jason who, who brought it up with me, the, the whole um, data usage. I had no idea it was that high. And that's when I was like, wow, like we need a really keep an eye on this yeah yeah and it seemed that she was cracking a little bit and getting up like mm. like mentally upset like okay okay well that's and that's kind of what I struggled with with Magda and that's where I guess that's something that you need to practice with management is everyone is so different and Magda was one of those people where she needed endless praise otherwise 
she like was so sensitive to any criticism and if you didn't give it constant praise she like couldn't couldn't deal with it she thought you know she'd just lose it and throw a tantrum kind of thing so I found that difficult because I'm someone that doesn't need constant praise and I think in the workplace you just get on and do your job so you know for a long time I had to kind of put off criticizing her and then when I did which is my job to she suddenly you know that's when she's like oh you're a and you're so mean to me and Rara and it's like oh my god like I've been treating you like porcelain how do you not understand <laughs> yeah no and you weren't like you weren't mean either that's no so that's hard that you had to it's, walk on eggshells it's so difficult and like how do you manage that you know yeah. it's like so that's where you really need to come back to yourself and and just try and understand what's the best way to manage each person yeah yeah and it was the loveliest dismissal I think ever on below deck mm. like you guys all hugged and she hit on Jason on her way out <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I know I like you know for all of her shortcomings at her job and um all of that she really did have the most classy exit I've ever seen and I really respect her for that yeah, are you are you still in touch with her? Because you don't seem like you ended on a bad note or No, we didn't end on a bad note, but we also weren't I think the whole time through this season, maybe it's a culture uh, you know, such different cultures or I don't know what it was, but we I feel like we didn't really connect deeply as friends the same way that I did with Tumi and um Brett. And so like absolutely adore her. I think she's wonderful. And we message every now and then, but not as much as, you know, to me and Bert, I talk to almost every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you and Bertini had a lot of fun and, you know, knowing you, you know, together, knowing you and knowing your personality, I know you were having fun with the whole Jamie thing oh. and the whole, but, you know, I thought about this, Asia. I'm wondering, was he kind of jealous that like Jason dismissed Magda and he didn't listen so he was sort of taking that out on you when he called you a bully recently <laughs> oh I'm a bully I'm like get out of here <laughs> um so yeah I think that he he'd already had like you know a lot of frustrations with Jason not listening to him and he seemed to listen to everything that I said um but you know and so I think that he did probably have a little bit of a chip on his shoulder towards me but I think with the whole Jamie situation, it was so difficult because all of us were walking around the boat, like the whole season, we were like, yell bitch, yell bitch. It's just what we all did with each other. It was so friendly. And I guess I hadn't realized that I hadn't said it to Jamie up until that point. And so when we, when I, when we said it to him, like both of us, it was in a very jovial, friendly kind of way. Um, and his reaction was surprising. But when I walked away in my mind, I was like, respect it that's what he's asked respect it respect it but then after I'd had a few drinks I just couldn't and I know that it's childish absolutely and I and I said to him a couple of days later it was childish and I apologize uh, but I think the reason that I couldn't respect it was because he's tried to turn it into this much bigger meaning because he's getting a lot of a lot of it online for his poor management and so he's trying to turn it into this much bigger deep issue and now we're bullying him and blah blah but from being there the whole season and being around him I could tell the only the reason he was reacting like that is because his whole identity is he's desperate to be macho and manly and this is a feminine word and so he couldn't stand it because that went against his identity and so that's just like something that I can't respect it's so stupid so that's why after a couple of drinks, I just couldn't resist and egg Magda on. Um, and, you know, and the next day, and, and we apologize and all of that, but I think for him to run straight to Captain Jason without chatting to us, especially Brutini, who worked her ass off for him all season, I just thought was a really <laughs> move on his part. And kind of showed me that, well, you're not that much, though, because you can't even come and have a conversation with, your crew members before you run to daddy so it's just, yeah and now he's turned it all into we're bullying him and it's just a I can see that it's just a, a really great defense from him to cover his poor performance yeah yeah so you guys are not in touch or, or were you in touch no. well point? I didn't even think that we were not okay because as I said when uh like a couple of days later I said to him I was like hey that was childish I'm really sorry and we had, and he's like that's that's okay and we had a quick hug and whatever um and 
and you know, and he's been in touch with Brit since then, and now all of a sudden it's an issue. We're bullying him, and that just adds to you know me being like, you're just making it into this big thing because you're trying to take the focus away from you doing a good job. Yeah. So it's yeah. just I see right through his game, and it's made me lose so much respect for him. So no, we're not in touch. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, and I think <laughs> it was a little confusing um, seeing that. Well, speaking of your arch nemesis, um, actually, <laughs> on the boat, let's let's just shift there. You know, it was, it was funny because we saw you and Tom on bed, you know, yeah. that was hard to watch, you know, and I did not like mm. seeing you cry over that. Um, you did not you. cry over Ryan, but you were like, it seemed instant, instant, like there was no even time for you to get in a fight. You already... What yeah. happened? What happened? <laughs> I know. Well, I just don't, I think it's just him. He's just arrogant as hell. And it's like, and it's so weird because as you say, it's like right from the get go, he just had this attitude. And I just don't know what it was about. And like, and now, now later on, what he's, I think he's getting so much, he's, get, he's so under fire that he's kind of the same as Jamie, reaching for excuses as to, why I'm the horrible one and he isn't and he claims that um you know he was like oh because when I went on and I was like are you really chefy and he's like that set the tone for the whole season but which is just ridiculous and every stew friend that I've talked to agrees it's like that's such a normal question to ask because chefs in the industry are known as being so for me it was almost just it was supposed to just be a fun icebreaker. It wasn't anything serious. It was just like playing around like, oh, are you Sheffy? Yeah. Because like, if, if someone came on board, if he said to me like, oh, are you like a real bitch like most Chiefs Jews? I would never take that seriously. I'd be like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. But he's, he's using that now as a thing to say that I hit the tone for the season, which I'm like, chill out, bro. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he if it was his goal to come on and be disliked or if he's just I think he's just that arrogant all the time. He just yeah. Yeah, because he did shift a little. Um what happened? Did he feel like Jason sort of breathing down his neck? Because you didn't run to him or anything. What do you think happened mm. for a while? Um, what do you mean when he had that one good charter again? Yeah, he seemed a little nicer. He wasn't being as mean. So it was sort yeah. of Yeah. I think honestly it was just because Jason was breathing down his neck you know I think he knew I think he knew that he kind of was gonna get fired if he didn't improve but you know the true it didn't last long and the true Ryan came straight back out again <laughs> honestly that was yeah that was that was shocking would you say though then that, that Ryan's the the meanest chef you've ever worked with or have you had even worse or comparable mm -hmm. chefs I, Ryan is the worst that I've worked with because I've worked with chefs before who can be mean and like, you know, can have their little tantrums, but they're still rational and very talented. So then, you know, they'll kind of di diffuse themselves and be like, sorry about that. I know that I got a bit, you know, um, and because they're really good at cooking, it's like a it kind of, you know, you, you can deal with that because because you're like, well, you are, you are um, coming through and giving amazing food to the guests. But with Ryan, he's, he, he's so deluded, I guess. Like he, he just, he's not rational at all. The way that he thinks is not rational and it's impossible to kind of have any sort of mature discussion with him. So it just, that's why it was, that's why I think that he was the worst chef that I'd worked with because you can't even have a discussion and he's got no self-reflection or self-awareness he just thinks that he's this amazing mighty higher person and you're like what are you thinking <laughs> oh, like man. oh seriously I just it's just it was he was just so irrational I and that's why a lot of the time you know people are like man you handled him so well I'd, I would have exploded but I just had so much other stuff going on and he was so irrational that it actually just required too much emotional energy to even deal with him. So I would just shut down around him and just try and get get through it. Yeah, let him hang himself, honestly, because you could have yeah. helped him. You could have helped him, but 
No, but I, and I couldn't, yeah, well, that's the thing, if he'd let me, but he just, he knew so much better, and he wouldn't speak to me, and so I just couldn't do anything, you know, even the fact that he, I mean, I think the first sign that he was bullshit about being passionate about food, which really spoke to me, was when he would plate food without even asking me if there's, if the guests are even at the table, and I'm like, who who on earth? I've never worked with a chef in my life that has plated food when they don't even know if they get you at the table. And because he was so, um, you know, wanted to make a point with like, it has to be at the exact time that you said five hours ago, mm-hmm. that just showed me that he had no passion because what? surely you'd want the guests to eat your food hot and how it was intended. Yeah. But he didn't care about that. He just wanted to prove points and be able to- Yeah, no, and that was tough. And then... Thankfully, you were able to get Nate in. Poor Nate seems like he's still trying to figure it out and we're ending the season. I mean, how was he? He seems to be pretty cool and easygoing. Just stressed out. Oh, he's awesome, honestly. I absolutely adore Nate. He's so, so cool. He, I felt so bad for him because the state of the galley, when you, when you come on, they, they didn't have enough time in the episode to even show the half of it. Like the whole fridge was full of molding dripping food just everywhere was absolutely disgusting and he had to come in and deal with that clean all of that up the dishwasher was broken and do all of these services and he just you know he coped he managed he put stuff out and and you know and every time he did have a little if we ever did um, you know, have a miscommunication like the first night. He never held it against me. You know, we'd just hug it out and we're like, that's fine. We'll just do better next time. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah, no, definitely. And then you get a new stew and it seems like you were sort of like, she can put tongs in with their, I love, you know what I mean? Yeah. Was it definitely like, she's just a lot easier and better, you know, more um, honest than Magda. Taylor. She was amazing, a true godsend, seriously, because she comes from the same background as me, you know, very big, high-end boat, mm-hmm. and so she just, she just got it. She had the experience that I needed. I didn't have to teach her or tell her or do anything. She's just like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and yeah, I just didn't have to watch her. It was amazing. Oh, it's too bad you couldn't have them a little earlier in the uh, season. I <laughs> reckon, honestly. So hard. Well, we're left with only a few more episodes, which stinks, but we're a bit of a cliffhanger here. We see Culver and Jordy making out. And I think we've mm-hmm. seen that in the past on Below Deck. I think um, yeah. Ashton kissed a charter guest. What is What is the protocol with that? I mean, once they're off the boat, is it they're off the boat or is that really, no, don't do that. No, once they're off the boat, it's, you know, it's free reign. They're all adults. They can do what they want. On the boat is, you know, you really shouldn't. But yeah. if if they want to give you their number and you have a little cheeky text afterwards, then go for it. Okay. But then, of course, there's poor Bertini. Oh, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> were they, did you, did you guys think they were going to, like, couple up or anything? Or was it more like they just seemed like they were friends and were going to go travel? Yeah, no, definitely not couple up because I think the natural chemistry wasn't there enough. I think it was more just like go traveling and have a cheeky, cheeky bounce, go wow, wow. But you know, it's one of those things where it's it's like yacht goggles and all of us have been there and it's when you've got a limited number to choose from and you know, it's kind of like you're not initially naturally really drawn to someone, but over time and you're stuck in this bubble, you kind of are like, okay, well, you know, if I had to pick, it would be you. And I think it was more one of those situations where they were the best fit for each other in what was available. And so, you know, and then we're all there like, do it, do it, do it. So I don't think it ever would have turned into some sort of beautiful romance. (laughs) Okay, good. All right, all right. So she she seems fine, but yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> and so I'm sure when you were finished, your boyfriend he seems so supportive. You know, you you went home. Did you guys do a little traveling after that, or you know? Um, yeah. So we um. Well, what did we do? So we spent the summer in the states because we're often based in Colorado and Breckenridge because. My boyfriend has dual citizenship, so he is our manager's a bar there, which is awesome. I love it. 
so yeah, kind of just hung around the Rockies, did a lot of hiking, and then we went home to New Zealand for the New Zealand summer, and it was amazing. We stayed with his parents, and it was the first time. Uh, two years later, it was the first time that I'd met his parents, and he met mine, and yeah, it was just a really beautiful summer. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. So, um, what what's next for you? I know the season's over. We're hoping we get another season, but are you still in yachting or what have you been doing? Um, so I've just been chilling. Yeah, I just have been cruising, <laughs> enjoying the episodes coming out. You know, we hope that something else will come, but I'm just kind of hanging around and waiting for my next move and just enjoying my life. <laughs> that's cool. So you're still in yachting. Yeah, yeah, I still want to do bits of temp work here and there. Um, I'm in Fort Lauderdale at the moment and hopefully can pick up a bit of temp work while I'm here. Um, but I don't, I would never go back to doing full time because it just gets too much. But yeah, I, I don't think until I maybe start having kids in five years time, I probably will always have a toe dipped in yachting. Okay, in five years time, because I was going to ask you before I let you go, you met the bit, you met Ava, right? You hung yes. out with Hannah. Did that yes. sort of give you the the itch, like the marriage and the baby and the house and all that? Oh, no way. Well, uh -huh. you know, we have, um, we have, like Scott and I have talked about it and we really want to get engaged and married and, you know, we want to buy a house this summer back in New Zealand, but yeah. honestly no rush you know we're both just having such a good time um enjoying ourselves and traveling and so all of that definitely want it to come but just not right now well that's great then awesome all right yeah. well we look forward to all that and um i'm looking Yay. forward to the end of the season i hate it's ending but we really enjoyed oh, it oh. So. well thank you so much for watching i so appreciate it and thank you for talking to me today yes thank you so much take care Aisha. all right bye, bye.